Hey, Chris with RC Worst here, and welcome to another Troubleshooting Your Well System video. Today we are going to go ahead and talk about Franklin Electric standard control boxes. These control boxes are available from 1.5 horsepower all the way up through 15 horsepower, and these uh, troubleshooting techniques are going to allow you to test any one of those boxes. Now this particular box, and we can tell on the front of it, a 3 horsepower control box, 230 volts. So before we actually jump into the troubleshooting, if uh, anyone is familiar with our YouTube channel, you may be used to seeing me clean shaven. Well, I'm happy to inform you that uh, hunting season is just a couple of days away, so I'm getting nature ready. On to the troubleshooting. So the first thing you're going to want to do, and assumably you've got a pressure switch in your system, uh, is check the voltage at the pressure switch. Now, of course, I want to remind everybody when you're troubleshooting your system, there is going to be live electricity on site, so be aware of that. Make sure to take all proper precautions, disable breakers, and everything like that. Um, so when it comes to checking the pressure switch, I like to turn the breaker off before I open the cap, because you never really know what you're going to expect in the breaker or in the pressure switch. So obviously, we don't have this one hooked up today because we're just kind of running through things, showing you what to do, how to check it, and I have my handy dandy $18 meter that I picked up uh, at the local hardware store, and uh, so it's relatively inexpensive and it allows pretty much anybody on nearly any budget to troubleshoot and test this equipment. So what I have my meter set to here is the high voltage setting which tests for anything above 200 volts, being that we're working with a 230 volt system, that's where we need to be for this. So on your pressure switch you're going to have um, the contacts here, you're going to have your lines in and your lines out to the control box. Um, so what you'll want to do with the, once you've got the top off, you know, turn the breaker back on and go ahead and check the voltage on these points. Um, try to check the load side voltage. The load side would be the wires that are running to the control box rather than the wires running to the pressure switch. This is going to allow you to essentially confirm that power is getting through the pressure switch and is actually making its way into the control box. So all you would do is take your uh, take your little meter leads, put those on the appropriate screws that are leading to the control box, and then you should be reading 230 volts or plus or minus 10% of that to confirm that it's working properly. Once you've confirmed that the voltage is in good shape, throw the slid back on. Then it's on to checking the voltage in the control panel should you want to confirm that the voltage is getting into the control panel. So to do that, in the control panel, you've got uh, L1, L2, yellow, black, and red. So L1 and L2, that's where your incoming power is going from the pressure switch up through the bottom of the box here and landing on these terminal points. So you can actually test these by putting your meter on these uh, screws here and that'll allow you to take a reading of if the voltage is getting into the control box. So that's essentially it for checking the voltage, uh, supply voltage getting to the control box. Now we'll jump into the ohm meter test that you need to perform in order to test the individual components within this control box. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get to testing. The first thing we're gonna test doesn't require any disassembly and it's a really good starting point because it's really easy to access and uh, is a pretty simple test to perform. So I've got the meter here. I went ahead and set it to one of the lowest ohm settings here. It's just uh, 200 ohms and it also has the beeper to verify continuity. Um, so what we're looking for on the um, on the overloads is that when we touch the two points, now you may be able to see this, that we've got a, a two points of solder here. So when we touch the leads to either one of those points, we want the meter to read less than 0.5. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that now. And I'm assuming it's probably gotten down to 0.5. Let me just confirm here. Yep, point, point 0.4 is exactly what we're reading on that one. And we'll go ahead and test the other one here. Now once you've tested these and they're reading below 0.5, um, then you know that those are good. Now in the instance that you perform this check and you're not getting anything, um, 
you know your meter's not taking any kind of a reading on the on the resistance there then what that means is that the overload's already tripped so you would reset that by pushing this button relatively hard until you hear a pop and that pop indicates that it's reset and you're ready to go ahead and test that overload so the next things that are in the control panel here is we have the capacitors and then back behind here we have the relay. So we'll go ahead and remove those so that it's easier to access and easier to show you guys how to do those tests. It is possible to test them without removing them, but I just find it a lot more convenient to, to go ahead and test them with the components removed. So we'll get those out real quickly here. So on the... Uh, on the capacitors, you've just got a, a number of wires that you can disconnect. I like to use a pair of needle nose to pull those off. Now be aware that capacitors can hold a charge similar to like a battery or something. So, so it is possible to get zapped if you were to touch the points across there. So be cautious of that. All right, so we've got the capacitors out of the box here. And uh, with this inexpensive meter, testing capacitors is not super easy, but it is possible. So um, what we're looking for is basically one, which is infinite resistance. Um, and that, that can be displayed there. Now zero, if I were to touch these together, that would be complete contact and, and continuity. So they're completely connected. And the way that a capacitor works is uh, the electricity kind of goes into it and it essentially kind of slows it down um, is the most basic way to kind of explain it. So what we're looking for is the capacitor, when we, when we touch the, the contacts, on, on or the terminals with our leads is this number is going to fall and then rapidly climb back up to one and that's going to indicate to us that the capacitor is good so let's see if we can get a reading on this one all right so it was quick i'll try to do it i'll do it one more time so we can go ahead and see the results one more time here so it went down and then back up really quickly now interestingly enough uh, when we test this capacitor we don't see the same result. Now what that's telling us is that this capacitor is bad. Um, now this thing is rusty and, and uh, it's probably seen better days. So I would say in this system, this capacitor is no longer good and needs to be replaced. Um, now you could potentially get a more expensive meter that performs a microfarad test and the microfarad rating is listed right on these capacitors and then you could very easily confirm whether or not this capacitor is in with is within its manufactured range this particular capacitor is 45 micro, microfarads plus or minus six percent and then this capacitor is 208 to 250 microfarads uh, so it's going to need to be within that range if you were to have that meter available. Now, I believe that in our previous video where we tested a standard control box, we went ahead and pulled out our more expensive meter and performed that test just to show you. So refer back to that video if you want an example of how that test is done. Otherwise, we're going to move right on and we know that at a minimum, we need to replace this capacitor before this well system is going to be up and running again. So the last component within the system is going to be the... Whoa, is going to be the relay. So we'll go ahead and pop that out of the box here. And to do that, we just need a screwdriver, which there it is, way over there. And we'll be right back. Okay, so relay is unscrewed. We can go ahead and remove these terminals here, just for easy testing. Come on, baby. There we go. Get this out of the way. Now that we've got our box in total and utter utter pieces here all over the place. So what we've got here on the relay, and I'll just remove this one for, for the sake of making it easier for you to see what's going on. So we've got uh, a set of con a, a number of different terminals here, and they're all numbered. So uh, five, two, and four are all numbered here. So to, to check this relay, we'll go ahead and refer back to what our meter settings need to be. All right, so uh, I don't know, things might be in a little bit different position here. We, we're having troubles with the getting a reading on this relay, only to realize that the, we won't name the country, but the battery uh, and its origin were not of quality in this meter. So we went ahead and replaced it with the Duracell, 
and uh, everything's hunky dory now. So uh, we'll go ahead and put these uh, motor or put these leads on five and two, and we're looking for a number between uh, 4.5 and 7.0. Now we're definitely there. So we know that we've tested the coil inside the relay, and we know the coil is good. The one other thing that we can test here is whether the contacts are located in the right position. Um, now this relay actually is pretty easy to open, so if you get some weird readings you can usually pop this open and look inside, and uh, usually it's pretty apparent if there's something wrong, you'll see a burnt spot or, or something like that. Um, but what we're going to check is the contact test, so we take our meter and put it down to the lowest setting, the one time setting, and then we're going to go ahead and check between one and two. And what we're looking for is zero all the way across the board. So we know that this is uh, this is open, and then we know that our coil is reading good. So we are in good shape. Now, while we were dealing with our battery debacle, we uh, went ahead and grabbed one of our other meters here just to confirm that we got an accurate reading on this bad capacitor and it, it is in fact bad so um, rest assured on that in case you were looking for a little peace of mind there um, so that is literally everything inside your control box we've tested the capacitors we've tested the relay we've tested the incoming voltage uh, and if all that checks out then chances are if you're still experiencing problems with your well uh, then it's not related to the control box the next steps in testing the system are going to be going into testing the wiring, electrical, and everything from the control box to the motor. And we've got a video worked up on that, so stay tuned in the playset and you'll see it. One last thought for you, um, if you're like me and you took all the components out of your control box to test them individually, um, you may not know exactly where everything goes. And that's where the cover is very handy because inside the cover you've got a wiring diagram and you've actually got a walkthrough of some of these troubleshooting steps. So keep that in mind as you're testing the system and putting everything back together.